Hi guys, and welcome back to your favourite podcast in the world. Uh, it's brought to you by Castmark Youth Complex, me, me and myself and Kirsty, um, bringing you episode 35 of The Milk Round. So welcome to episode 35, if you haven't checked out our other episodes, they're all on our YouTube as well, which you're on just now. So if you can like the video, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and share the videos far and wide on all your social medias. We're always sharing information and stuff on our social medias, and you can get us on our social medias. Uh, Facebook at Kelly Youth Complex Staff. Our Twitter is Youth Complex CYC. Both our Instagram and TikTok are Youth un- underscore Complex. So we've changed the name of our TikTok, but it's still the same page. So if you're already following us, then it's all right. But if you want to find our TikTok now, it's going to be Youth underscore Complex. And you can email us as well at cycyouthteam at gmail.com. Um, as I say, we're on episode 35, Kirsty, that's, that's a big 35, it? man, we're on our roll. Aye, we're doing really well. Doing really this, man. Aye, aye. Doing it, and good. We've got a brilliant but, episode lined up as well for this week. Yes, we've yes, definitely. A brilliant guest, so stay tuned for Ooh. halfway through this podcast. The title will get away, but... Um, aye. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> just watch it anyway, right? You're already watching, so just keep watching. Um, so I last week we had on Mikey and he was excellent on. He was talking about so funny. Up. Aye, it was a good laugh. Big like savage he? pants. Aye, <laughs> just calling people out left, right, and centre. Just gone for it. Um, but before he before he started being a wee bit of savage, he was being quite sensible and talking to us. He was, he was. Aye. Um, was and really setting good. us up for this week, Kirsty, which is a mod, uh, apprenticeship week. Apprenticeship week, yes. So hopefully you've been seeing on all our social medias, and um, we've been sharing stuff every day um, about apprenticeships. If you are confused, worried, want a wee bit of advice, need help with an application, just hit me up on uh, the UFA Facebook page. Uh, we also have a job club page. Well, it's a group. It is, aye, it's a group. It's a group. Sure. Um, which is a public group, so you can you can just uh, go in and look, or you can join it, and you can get notifications every time we post jobs on that. Um, so I'm posting lots of apprenticeships at the moment. Um, if you're unsure if it's for you, or you're unsure what a specific um job application is asking you, just there's no stupid questions like we we've all been there. So um, it's just purely experience that we might have we'll be able to share and if we don't know we'll find it together aye aye sounds good so get us on our social medias which you heard at the start or you'll hear again at the end of the podcast um so last week as i says we had mikey on and he was calling everybody out like you say Kirsty. Uh, <laughs> but during yeah. last week's episode i called you out because i was three two up and uh Kirsty <laughs> versus lee challenge now we're gonna so the forfeit was that you were to sing it every week but i'm no mean so we're gonna just mm-hmm play it right now for you, so here we go. Nah, can I hear it? Uh, no. You know hear it? No, you'll just have to sing it. Oh, no. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Once we get more tech savvy and stuff, we are going to try our best to get mind of all Man, tech. I was pure buzzing like that we <laughs> sorted that. <gasps> I should have put it and shared my screen. Fuck. Aye, we'll do that for next week. Wait, we'll, we'll sort it. We'll figure once, it out. Once we're more tech savvy and we'll maybe go to something gone on with mm. I'm not even going to call it out yet don't don't song, don't do it, don't do it. I'm so excited about that really. but we've just came up with it before this episode started recording so we might have something coming up for the song so keep watching the episodes but anyway back to Kirsty versus Lee I challenged you to the cracker challenge because I was like right it's in the bag 3-2 I'm going to go 4-2 up and Mikey was there and watched me challenge you like yes mm-hmm. bring it on thought you were so, mental but what you yeah. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. My team was so bad, man. Mate, I watched, I was like pure panicking. Like, the I had done it and I was pure like, <laughs> choking on the crackers. Like, it was all stuck up air. I was like a hamster. It was like Chubby Bunny all air again, but like with sawdust or something. Aye. It was crazy. And I was like, oh, who's going to win? And I thought I started off well and I was like, I peaked. I peaked. And that's it. I'm not going to get any better. And then it was the end, and I felt as if I was taking ages to get the last wee bits. Mm-hmm. And then I had seen the time, and I was like, oh, he's, he's won. Like, he's won. It's fair enough. I gave it a good bash. Mm-hmm. And we obviously uploaded it at the same time Aye. so that we could not like, do another video Aye, or something like that. Um, but honest to God, it was pure difficult. Aye, so I was actually chatting to your sister. Because right. uh, she was laughing that um, you lost and uh, <laughs> was saying that it was, it was really difficult. Uh, and I was chatting to some of my pals about it as well. So we actually did it 
and did it again. Mm-hmm. And I did it worse. Did you? <laughs> Aye. Even after all the experience of doing it the first time? Aye. How'd that happen? I don't know, like the adrenaline wasn't there or oh. like, <laughs> but this is before I knew I won. But I had all like in my head thought I had lost. So I was like, oh, oh well, like I gave it a good try. Aye. Oh, well, you beat me by also, a minute, I think. You got like I, 138 or something, didn't you? Aye. Mm-hmm. You got 238, so a full minute, that is, that's some gone. Aye. I mean, you could have one out eating challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to try out the Cracker Challenge as well and send in your times and your attempts, then yeah, upload the video, tag us, send it into our social medias and we'll share it and stuff if you want us to, um, and see if you can beat Kirsty's record at 138, 137. Is it something about that? I think... I think it was like 135. Is it? Why? It was something, something crazy like that. Flying. Absolutely flying. So you've tied it all up, Kirsty. You brought it back to three each. Yeah, buddy. I took the lead. That's, I think that's the only lead I'm going to get in the full series because <laughs> I held it for one week. Um, but three each. And you, it's back to you to challenge me to something. Now, so. Yes. So these are challenges that you can all day like you can do them on zoom with your family or your pals or you yeah. can do them socially distanced so it's really good that you can kind of copy or get involved or video yourself doing it and be involved with us um so this week's challenge is the after eight challenge yeah. other yeah. mint flavored chocolates are available <laughs> <laughs> my bike out man myself <laughs> Viscounts were like visitor biscuits, weren't aye, they? Aye. <laughs> oh, I used to love it. We had a wee visitor room, aye. a wee cheeky Viscount and a blue band. <laughs> you used to get the biscuit tin out, but you had to get the right biscuit tin out because one. Well, the one with the sewn. Aye. Mm-hmm. Who aye. does that? Ma- yeah, aye. Ah, so I've got biscuits, and then you go in, your mum's put all sewn kit in it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're chewing a needle, you need a chewing. <laughs> chewing a Viscount. Right, so the after eight, so you need to put it on your forehead and you need to like scrunch your face, no hands included, and you've got to get it down and into your mouth. Right. So we'll have a race. So what I was thinking when we see each other on Friday, socially distance, obviously. Yeah. Um, we can do it then. Sounds good to me. Aye, good stuff. Right, I've so. got to say, I've got some experience with this because the first lockdown, mm-hmm. we were thinking of things to put up on the Facebook and all that for the youthy, and I did put one of these up, so I did. Uh, I think it was a Oh my god, you did, you did the cookie, didn't you? A cookie, aye, it was a Maryland's cookie, aye. Other cookies are available. <laughs> <laughs> but aye, I did, I had done the video it, so I've got some experience and I've but, got a face like that can just move always. Yeah, to be fair, I've got an extra couple of elms growing <laughs> off my eyebrows. There's only so much concealer that you can get involved in here. Like, I was just drawn on shapes today. <laughs> um, I think we the after eight because one side's flat and ah. one side's bumpy, so you need to put the flat side down. Don't be cheating, like right. and I. So we can get so it just slides off, right? So, but we'll record it as well when we do it on Friday. Yes, we'll definitely, on definitely. and then we'll have big jobby stains to run. <laughs> <laughs> Ash Wednesday chocolate Friday, <laughs> Simba. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So uh, keep your eye out for that. People who maybe are in school at this point might be able to help us out with that on Friday. So if you're watching this on Thursday night, be prepared to help us out on Friday if you're in the school. But only if I sound. Aye. aye. <laughs> only if I sound. I don't know if they are sound. I don't mm. know. Some are on the <laughs> No, they're all sound so far, but they have to behave well on Friday. Mm. Yep. That's, that's, a, that's a goal of theirs. So they can join in the after eight challenge. I'm looking forward to it, Kirsty. I know, I'm then excited. Somebody will take the lead for three, unless we do it at the exact same time, which would be amazing. Oh, how funny would that be? But then we'd need to do a rematch, so we'd end up with even more chocolate orders. Like two? Aye. Like two at the one time. Oh, at the one time. <laughs> yeah, I've got a massive mouth though. Like, <laughs> they'll like just fall down and be like, ah. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> a big pelican. Yeah. Oh, but it's um, a frog, you know, when they see a fly. And it's like... <laughs> Just put your tongue up to your <laughs> together. Right, so that is Kirsty versus Lee this week. So keep your eye out uh, for that challenge on our social medias. It'll probably go up on Friday night then, I suppose. Yes. Aye. Mm-hmm. So you're watching this on Thursday. That will be Friday night. Um, so our next segment of the podcast is our nice news. So 
Nice news this week. It's similar to what we told what we told you last week. Um, we're still promoting Kirsty's Kilt Walk, so that donation link is up on our social medias. Um, please donate to that, guys. It'd be a great help. Um, all money's gone towards the youthy, and we're going to decide what we do with that um, to help young people in our community. Um, I've actually had to change my target because I bashed through that target so quickly. So mm. thank you to everybody who has already donated. Um, and remember that the, the guy that runs it, Sir Tom Huntley, he oh, of how much? Oh, sorry, you just froze for a wee second there. You're back. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we get fifty percent for free, basically. So we get the full amount of money. So say I raised three hundred pounds, then we would get an extra. Let's have fifty. Hundred and fifty. Hundred and fifty. Aye. 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 We get an extra hundred and fifty on top of that. So think if you donate a fiver, I get an extra two fifty. Um, on top of it for free. So it's free money and it's all going to the young people I cast milk. So yeah. please dig deep. Aye. Excellent. Um, we'll put that link up again. So well, it is in last week's description of the video and we've got it on our social media. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, another piece of nice news, it might not be nice to all young people, but uh, mm -hmm. schools are returning. We've got dates for schools returning now. So primary kids are all going back on the 15th of March. So it's only one, two and three just now, but 47 are going back. So you might have wee brothers or sisters and nieces and nephews who might be going back to school. Um, you might be able to get them out your hair when you're trying to study in the house. Um, but then they'll start bringing some high school pupils back on that date as well. Um, I don't know how they're going to work I, that yet. I think they're focusing on the seniors. Mm -hmm. Aye, because we've got some of them in the high schools just now for practical mm -hmm. lessons, don't we? But I think they're going to try and get them back sooner. Um, and then their end goal is to have you all back in high school um, by the end of the Easter holidays. Mm -hmm. So but as soon as we know, you will know, we'll share, right. we'll share what we find out. Right. Um, Aye, and if you have you heard any whispers, he's a wee message. Tell us aye. in case you know before us. Aye, the eyes are the community. <laughs> yes, aye. <laughs> they know. <laughs> um, and then one last piece of nice news is a wee bit of personal news for yourself, Kirsty. Yes, I got my vaccine. Yes. So I've got the first vaccine, got the Oxford um, one. I thought it even makes a difference to anybody that's interested. <laughs> uh, and and. Between 10 and 12 weeks, I'll get my next one. So uh, I'm buzzing about that. Um, obviously, when you get your vaccine, the first vaccine, it's, um, it takes up to three weeks for it to fully kick in. But it doesn't mean that I am COVID safe. Um, so lots of people are still getting COVID um, when they've had the vaccine and stuff like that. They might not get it as bad. Um, but some people are still getting it really, really pretty difficult. Um, and I so I just hope that it's it's just a wee step towards normality, I feel. Aye, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Aye. And my advice would be, I think I said it a couple of weeks ago as well, and it's only my personal views, but if you're offered it, definitely take it. I think it's a good step forward for everybody. And you're probably saving some people that you know as well if you do it. Um, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, but also like Kirsty says, if you do get it, still follow all the protocols that are out there. Don't think, oh, that's me go to Jag. I can go and out with my mates and go and see my granny and get a hug and stuff. It's not like that. No. Um, we'll get the rules of lesson in that with the male vaccines that go out, but... Aye, brilliant. Happy for you, Kirsty. That's good. Brilliant, brilliant. Excellent. Fingers crossed we can all get them soon and get back to normality, yes. like you say, and hopefully have a good summer. Um, Aye. So that is our nice news, and that moves us on to what people's favourite part of the podcast, a fan's favourite, before our guest comes on, and that part is what's in my telly and what's in my belly. Um, so will I run through mine first, Kirsty? You go first, yeah. So what's on my telly this week? So this is something that I have watched, and I just wanted to say it to recommend it to you and to our older viewers and members i wouldn't say anybody under 17 should watch it okay. um, because it's a true story drama um set in the 80s about um some murders that happened down south in essex um and a family were murdered um in their farmhouse uh, and it's yes! white house farm Yes, uh -huh. yeah. me and Tony were watching this. Right, okay, aye. Um, I remember really watching good. Like, simultaneous and chatting about it. Oh my God, amazing, wasn't aye. it? Aye, it was really interesting. Obviously, it's such a sad, tragic story, what happened. Um, but... It's horrible that it's true as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so, like, crazy to yep. think. That's, 
But it's portrayed really well in all the actors do well and the seriousness of it like comes across and stuff. So mm-hmm. um I for the older ones, if you're into stuff like that, like watching dramas and watching more serious stuff, then definitely check out White House Farm. It's on um, Netflix. I don't know if it was maybe on four or BBC or something when it first came out, because I think it's been it for about three years now. Oh, has it? Aye. I think it said twenty eighteen on it. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but um it's still on Netflix anyway. Um but I I I'd recommend that. That's what I've watched this week. Um and what's in my belly this week is something that's been brought up on the podcast before and everybody's trying it. Um, I, th- I think I've seen it on social media as well by some of the youth staff. I think Stacey maybe done it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, and the other day when I was collecting something for the youth complex and people were, were working away, um, I think Stacey was having a wee break and making a couple of them as well. Yeah, um, I, they were so banging. This so is the, were... the TikTok rap. So mm-hmm. um, it's been spoken about before, but basically you get a rap you cut from the middle down to one side of it and then you can fold it four ways into like quarters um, and it's like a wee kind of triangle shape like that and then you put it in a pinning machine. So what I had in mind was a breakfast wrap the other morning. So Ooh. I made some bacon, grated cheese, sausages and then an omelette and that was it. Aye, it was like a... Oh, that sounds breakfast. amazing. Aye, it was excellent and I had any day mines on a tortilla wrap. I've spoke about these and Lebanese flatbreads or something you get for Asda. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. 80 pence or something or 80 pence for a full bag mm. of five. And I'd done it on that and it was, oh, it was delicious. So it was oh, uh, good. just Aye. crunchy enough, the cheese melted through and all that. But you're getting a taste of every bit. Of everything. Yeah, so Aye. you don't get to the end and it's like a canetto and you get to the end, it's just the end. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Aye. Aye. Aye, it's, that's, that's really good. So that's we had um, spicy... Is it peri peri chicken ones? Oh, amazing. Really good, eye. So, so good. Aye. <laughs> so, I'd recommend yeah. trying to name it. Um, if you don't know what it is, you'll see it on TikTok. If you see his video with her and Riley doing it, it was brilliant. Ah. Uh, he showed you step by step and stuff like that. I tried to do that with my pancake. Remember on Pancake Day? Aye. I tried to do like the whole wrap in there thing. Oh, right. But, aye. Um, aye, my pancake structure wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work like that. Like and a I was trying to fold it when it was still hot. Oh. So I kept burning my fingers. And <laughs> I had like chocolate and the biscoff. And, oh, oh no. yeah, it was a whole mess. Mm-hmm. But it was tasted amazing. Aye. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it looks like, as long as no, it's nice. No. Aye. It's on my face, but like. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for Friday, the after eight challenge. <laughs> chocolate on our faces. <laughs> um, so that's what's on my telly and what's in my belly this week Kirsty, what about you, what's on your telly? So what's so on my telly is uh, I'll obviously watch that as well um, but I've been currently watching uh, what did I call it? Su- Superstore Superstore, that's mm-hmm. thanks, I've got the worst name ever <laughs> Superstore, aye, so it's got um, America Ferreira how that was in Ugly Betty Yeah. she's brilliant, so she is and I just love her and um, and it's kind of like Ugly Betty and it's kind of like Jane the Virgin and it's a wee bit like like the daftness but like um but they're based in a supermarket basically mm-hmm. and they all work there and they all kind of go on and they have fun um playing games and having competitions and all that and uh, there's a couple of love romances in the job and there's some weird characters so definitely that's a one for everybody you can watch um mm-hmm. it's good easy and uh, there's some funny bits as well hi excellent good good stuff hi so it's been well, well i was going to talk about the Stacey was meeting, so I so maybe I will. Oh, right, okay, might not be a popular one, right? right. Chocolate, right? Mm-hmm. See, when you like, there's there's elite chocolate, which is like lint, that's like elite, right? Then you've got like just amazing chocolate, which is a twiddle, mm-hmm. right? Because you get two, and it's a flake with a Jacob on, mm-hmm. right? Brilliant. Then you get holiday chocolate. Right, okay. Right. But we've not been on holiday, have really. No, no, no. But you can go to BM and get a wee cheeky bar of milk. Right, okay, aye. Uh-huh. And the, the youth complex got us, uh, gave us some like wee goodie bags and there's yep. a bar of milk chocolate in it. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. Aye. I know it's so good. About. So you've got wee bar of milk, other chocolates available. 
oh, it's just so good, man. It just makes you think, like, you were on holiday. Mm-hmm. I got a packet of waffles and kitted on the Marleys, and then I was sorted. <laughs> All I needed was a fan of lemon. Aye. And, like, <laughs> and... Put some sun cream on so you can get the smell and all that. And <laughs> aye, yeah, aye. Aye, so milk or chocolate, just, aye, it's good, aye. man. Really, aye, really good. It's in my belly. Aye, brilliant. There we go. That was quite short and sweet, but I think good recommendations mm. in there for people to watch and people to eat. Aye. Aye, definitely. Definitely. But that's not going to be the last of the recommendations for What's in My Telly and What's in My Belly because mm. we've got a guest coming on. Like I say, it's episode 35. We've got to make it a good gin. So... Kirsty, can you introduce this week's guest, please? Yep, so we've got a friend of mine coming on. It's the Fab... Is he? You'll need to say that again, because you've paused again. You, you froze. Well, have I? Aye. So that's the wifey. Fab. Oh, right, so with the Fab, Kira Lucchese. There we go. Woo. And she's coming in the now. Hopefully she's still there. And she is. She's Hi, Kira. <laughs> I you think? Sure I'm good. As we were sitting, thinking about trying to do something funny there, not. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> as so the best you I can might recognise uh, Kira. She's been anywhere and everywhere. So she has um, River City, Slab Boys, and the other, the Nest, uh, chewing the fat when she was a young uh, pre-pubescent teenager. <laughs> <laughs> um, aye, so that's just to name a few. Um, so we've got the lovely Kira on, and we're going to be chatting this week on the topic of uh, saving the arts so we know that obviously lockdown has hit um lots of kind of industries quite bad and youth uh, youth complex is one of the largest youth arts agencies in europe i know thinking about a, a wee scheme youth club um but as actually we've got our own theater so it's it's a pretty big deal yeah. and we myself and lee have got a, a art arts background um, where we drama babies ourself <laughs> um, we love a, a good performance mm-hmm. uh, Gilly a fella boa and he'll be away it's just on a, a Thursday night <laughs> catch me in the soft <laughs> but also, we put on uh, as a lot of viewers and members will know we put on um, shows every Christmas as well so that's written and directed by uh, Kelly and Fraser and they're excellent shows Young people, if they cast milk, get to get involved in something uh, with rehearsals for October right up to December and put on a performance or two nights um, on, in a theatre on a great stage with great. brilliant audience music coming to us. So I, we thought we'd get Kieran, somebody who's an expert in this in this field, um, who can chat to us a wee bit about that and maybe give you some advice uh, to the young people that come along. But before we get into our, our serious questions where we start grilling you, Kira. Uh, yeah. We're going to ask you first, um, what's on your telly and what's in your belly this week? We did this with every guest and just see what they've been watching and uh, something they've been eating as well this week. So first right, off, straight, and- straight for the food, mate. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've just pure... Is this going to be a long-winded question? Is that a long-winded answer? Is that all right? I, I, I do tend to ramble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've been cooking a lot. We've pure light cooking in the house, me and uh, mother half. So um, we've kind of patched the takeaways because I've had one too many takeaways this mm-hmm. lockdown. Yeah. Um, so we've actually, we've been cooking from a book called uh, The Shum. There's this, it's a fancy restaurant in Edinburgh and they've got a cookbook. It's an Indian restaurant uh, and the, all the recipes take about 10 hours to make. <laughs> but oh my they worth it god man there's this one it's a lentil curry right and you boil the lentils for seven hours and it's amazing i know so we did it today right and i've been starting like doing our own weekend of takeaway service so oh, we've, right. uh, <laughs> we've been cooking for like our friends and our family and stuff like that and um i live in like a kind of low rise i don't know aye, a low rise tower block thing uh, we've got cleaners so i cook some food for the cleaners today oh, and all that. we put it in the wee, the wee trays and all that so <laughs> <laughs> how do you know I can make a bit of money out of it, man? Aye. Don't get any work to do. So, uh, Indian, it's all Indian for me, Lee. Right, nice. At the moment, anyway. Aye, good stuff. And and if it's all made, you're saving a bit of dosh as well, aren't you? So, that's a bonus. That's it. But I don't think I could, I don't know if Kirsty's the same as me, but I don't think I could wait seven hours for my dinner. No. It um, is, honest to God, it is so worth it. It's like, it's a heavy, easy recipe, but... Mm. It takes a it's lot of care and attention. Aye, aye. Yeah. Is it something that you can like kind of start go away and then come back to it or no, nah, that's the thing. Because I was pure held hostage to my 
when it was the David <laughs> um, Davy made Davy made two of the curries and I made one of them and uh, I've got a wee girl she's two and um, she wanted to go outside and I was like I want to go and fr- get fresh air but I, I couldn't I had to stay in the lentils so oh. I don't know what it is but I'm telling you it's worth it, uh, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> uh, what's on my telly I'm trying to think we've been watching the now um, I'm kind of a wee bit of a sucker for documentaries and stuff, so I've watched, we watched The Cecil Hotel, have you seen that? Aye. Yes, oh my that. God, how how mental is that? I know, so we just finished that, but then I, f- I think after that I needed a bit of light entertainment, so mm. I've been watching Drag Race and yes. uh, Interior, Interior <laughs> Design Masters with Alan Carr as well. <laughs> I like I'm, I'm, I'm Sorry, I'm just going. To, what are you saying, Lee? No, I was just saying I like to look at that interior designs, but I never sat down and watched it. Um, it's heavy, good man. It's just, like, but I think I've I've went a bit mad like the last few while, because I've no creative outlet and all that. So I've driven day up the house. This is a rented flat, so I'm not allowed to do that much. So it's all cosmetic. Right. But I'm getting like stickers for the wall and all that, and try to find <laughs> ways to make it all like. But nice so but I'm like a woman possessed I painted a, a mural the other day I'm nice. like I have to paint that <laughs> try to get over creative juices I've never painted it in my life but I'm trying to get creative juices flowing around but aye that's what I've been watching <laughs> what are you watching? Good shouts uh, we, we just finished our section so I was a wee bit more serious and uh, a wee bit horrible what I watched but um, it was White House Farm and it's like a serious um, Is drama. that Stephen Graham one? Uh, Stephen Graham's playing the um, DCI in it um and right. my father was just been working with him actually right uh method on mix on it as well don't know his his real name but he's he's Scott, also. i i went to your theater with scott right. he's he's good in it he's um he's one of the detectives and um, but i so i didn't know about the story before i watched it but um quite harrowing but um really good but i, only, I can only recommend that to our older members um and then kirsty what were you watching again I was watching Superstore, which was just like a wee fun kind of programme. It's got America Ferrara in it. Ferrara? Can't pronounce it properly. Yeah. Um, for Ugly Betty. So it's kind of like a, a wee series. Um, it's just daft stuff. Kind of makes me think of like Scrubs and um, The Office and stuff like that. You know, like oh, made up, cool. just pure random stuff. So it's good to think sometimes when you go and sit down and watch a telly, you just want something easy. Aye. You don't need to think as well. Mm. Um, I know. So, yeah, it's been good. Especially during this, you want something like that. You or like you're maybe working all day, and then you go, hey, I need to release because you're maybe working from home as well. Yeah. Which means your your living space becomes your workspace. So you need to yeah. get something like that, just an outlet where it's just something daft to watch like that, I suppose. I know. Definitely. So um we're gonna go into the questions. I now. Watched sorry. Oh, sorry, when you go. <laughs> No, it's all right. I was just rambling. It's fine. It. <laughs> um, so, first question is basically, how did you first get involved in theatre and television yourself, Kira? So, I was so I went to youth theatre for like when I was about I'm trying to think when I started going maybe about six or something like that. And uh, the youth theatre I went to kind of acted uh, as a as an agency type thing as well. It wasn't serious or anything like that, but um, they just kind of had books and like people with like, you know, were casting and needed kids or whatever, they'd come to the youth theatre and look for folks. So um, my mum originally sent me to youth theatre because she just wanted somewhere for me to go and get all my energy out because I was there on nothing. So it wasn't like, my mum wasn't like a pure like, pushy parent or anything like that. She just wanted me to go and just enjoy myself. But when I went there, I, I realised that it was something that I, I really wanted to do. So... I think I did my first professional job when I was nine. Um, it was like a wee, it was a BBC education program, um, and that was kind of it. So I just kind of just always had like kind of wee jobs even through school. Custom mentioned like don't turn the fat and all that, and you get the photos out of that. <laughs> I should have. Uh, I should have. <laughs> oh, oh, the, 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 the. <laughs> I know. I'm glasses, sure you put your glasses on in that as well. I. Class, I, I, I did a couple of them. Um, I so it was all that kind of thing. I that's kind of, I think that's kind of answer your question. I could go on and on about other, but that's yeah, kind of it. It's kind of always something I did. Mm-hmm. 
Aye. No, I, that's good. That's good. We've got lots of young people that take part in our productions, um, or some of them are involved in like the school productions. Yeah. Um, and there is some kind of youth uh, theatres that are run about as well that they get involved in, which is brilliant. As, see, before we go on to the next question, sorry, Kirsty, see the Scottish Youth Theatre? Is that still running? Aye. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Right, okay. Did Aye. they move for like, because they were at like the BBC Studios part, weren't they? I don't know. I know that they're at um, in a merchant city. Aye, where well, the food market and that is in that area. And there was like the BBC um, Orchestra part. Oh, there. Sorry, I thought you were talking about like uh, BBC Studios. I don't oh, know. no, no, the key. Sorry, I was meaning the Aye. Key, that. Aye. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, so it's Brunswick Street, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Aye, I think it's. Aye. Aye, it's running a bit there. I think yeah. it's still there. Right, okay. I, sorry, I just didn't know if it was still running. I was having a conversation about the youth theatre like two days ago because um, I'd done a wee production with a school we were at as well mm -hmm. um, when I was yeah. younger, but I've just not heard much about it recently. Mm -hmm. So that's good that it's I still think running. I brilliant but... when mm -hmm. the schools get opportunities to link up with kind of big prestigious organisations like that. It's um, definitely it's things that um, stay in your mind, don't they, like later on in Aye. years, and it's kind of those inspiring moments. Um, so that is, that is really, really good. <laughs> Um, so, Kira, do you know of any Glasgow-based groups for young people to become involved in the arts? So we just kind of spoke about, like, the Scottish Youth Theatre. I mean, there's so many in the middle, Christy. I mean, there's, like, there's Scottish Youth Theatre, there's, um, so I think Glasgow-based, obviously, like, Abbey at Pace, that was kind of split in Paisley. Um, there's places like UK Theatre School, Gampton, all that. What I would say is, is this, these places cost money, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that's kind of you know it's great but I mean one of the places that I went to later on when I was a wee bit older which was amazing and it's dead dead hard because there's only 20 spaces in it um, but they do have a waiting list is um, the Citizens Theatre Young Company mm -hmm. um, which is brilliant man yeah um, but actually just before we came on here I had a wee look just online to see if, look, what's going on now and they're still doing a lot of stuff online mm -hmm. and all that but the, the spaces are all full at the moment but they do have a waiting list but um, they were, uh, it was brilliant. I mean, the Citizens Theatre's an amazing place. It's getting done up the noon uh, and all that. But their, their mm -hmm. ethos is all about, you know, I mean, the theatre was built right in the heart of the Gorbals mm -hmm. to bring the people of the Gorbals into the theatre. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because the theatre was always, and it still is to a certain extent, I think we're kind of trying to, you know, make it more affordable and make it a place that mm -hmm. people feel more comfortable and it's not a middle-class thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they still do their, well... I know they're new, obviously, but they did like uh -huh. 50 pence tickets and all that. Um, so I think that what's brilliant about this, the Citizens Theatre is, is that it's a professional place. You've got really, really good people there um, that know their shit. Mm -hmm. um, but you you feel at home there. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye, it's I very, 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 very my... welcoming. Oh, oh, 39%. Sure. Sorry. Oh. I'm just checking the. <laughs> I've not got my laptop plugged in, man. I've not got an extension cable. <laughs> Very low sat. Sorry. No, uh, I think it is. It's dead. It's dead, dead. Well, yeah, there's lots of places out there, man. Mm -hmm. I and I, I love I love the citizens theatre. We did some work uh, with them in the youth complex. We did Heart Over History, so it was like a recreation of uh, Scarf for Life. Um, and we did oh, lots cool. of work um, and it was basically the the young people wrote it and created it um, in partnership with the Citizens Theatre and um, made it into like a skills pack to be put out and it was basically like a young person from St Margaret Mary's and a young person from Castle High falling in love and how that wasn't allowed and um, how they kind of brought it to more modern day uh, life, how sectarianism was maybe more of a an ancestry kind of thing, while it being like your parents' issue or your grandparents' issue rather than your issue. And it was about that education and stuff like that. And that was, um, it was lots and lots of fun, um, which is on our YouTube as well. So yeah. you're obviously watching our YouTube right now. So give that a wee watch ah. called Heart Over History. Good plug. Good. good plug. Well done. No aye, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Usually me that does the thoughts, but aye, that was good, Kirsty. You can start thanks. taking them. <laughs> uh, and I suppose um, if young people fake asthma are looking to get involved in stuff like that, come along to the youth complex, try it out. We're doing drama workshops um, and the drop-in and stuff. We do games in our theatre and, uh, and drop-in nights and stuff like a Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So when we're back open, come in, get involved in stuff like that and then put your name forward for being on one of our, our Christmas shows as well. And I suppose... Start... Are you talking to the young people or me? 
Ah, <laughs> the, the young people. Come. You come along as well, Kira. <laughs> Kira's like, pick me! No, no, like that, but I've definitely had to, I didn't know any of that, man. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'd love to come along. Definitely. I'll definitely. Get, get you on board. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, you've said it now, Kira. We'll, we'll keep you to it. <laughs> Can't <I> backtrack. <laughs> well, <laughs> really, you have a mood anyway. <laughs> our next question was going to be um, obviously, Kirsty's touched on it. Like, a lot of things have been affected by COVID, a lot of um, aspects of society and things like that. And one of the biggest uh, fields is that is taking a hit as the art. So like the um music, we've had some musicians on um a podcast and they've spoke about how it's affected live music and affected them recording new new stuff. Um but could you just tell the young people how it's affected the arts, the COVID? Well there's no th- no shows. <laughs> there's no theater. It's just it's just kind of died. Mm. Um to be honest. So I mean things now are in terms of telly um, and stuff like that, things have started to, you know, start reshooting and stuff and they're testing and mm-hmm. try to do it in the safest possible way. But theatres, I, I don't think, I mean, it's had some support. It's not had enough support. Um, I just don't know where we're going to be at when we come out the other side of this. Mm-hmm. But we'll get there. I think that what's been amazing is, is that the type of people in our industry, like creative people, self-employed people, we're used to having a making shit happen Mm -hmm. you know so I think that people have been finding alternative ways of doing things it's not always the best yeah um I think I've watched a lot of like kind of theater stuff online because people are trying to kind of do this little theater experience online if you ask me it doesn't really work but what the hell else are you supposed to do do you know what I mean it's like Mm -hmm. um and it's amazing what people have done I think people have used a lot of time to kind of write and create and develop stuff so that when we come out the other side yet we're ready we're ready to go but it's just just whether or not there's going to be the the space to to facilitate all that Mm -hmm. stuff do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. um so it's just it's just like everything everything's taking a hit um but it, it just it's that whole you know there was a whole kind of campaign on social media and stuff about like you know having a viable job and all that this mm-hmm. you know back and you know it's hello I'm viable you know what has yeah. everybody been, what has everybody been doing during lockdown I watching, watching the Netflix I watching the arts listening to the arts I complaining that there is no arts like yeah. I, it's everybody's outlet isn't it whether in one form or another um and it's it's definitely people are kind of tapping into their creative side as well so it's crazy to think that it isn't being supported as well as it should be. Um, and I, it's difficult to see at the future, really, of it yeah. and how, how we're going to come out. But obviously there's creativeness there. So, so um, And listen, I'm everybody's sure. biased. Do you know what I mean? I'm sitting here as an actor going like, ah, what about me? Whereas there's somebody, you know, that, I don't know, I'm not even going to think about the example, but they, they've got their own shit and they're like, what about me? Do yeah. you know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. like, at the end of the day, this is just a crap situation for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um and we kind of fixed everything on the one go, so we'll get there at all. It'll mm. be fine, but um, by it's just it's difficult, you know all that stuff you're talking about earlier on about working from home. Mm-hmm. Like, how the how the fuck do I work from home? Aye, yeah. like, do you know what exactly. I mean? It's like yeah. it's so Aye. weird. And you you are kind of hurt doubly because you and Davy are both involved in the same kind of field of work, so it's not as if you can rely on like lean on your partner's job or whatever because you're both like in in that field so it is it, it must it must be really really difficult and the financial stuff and all that as well do you mm-hmm. know what I mean it's like that's like it's a pressure but for every, for everybody you know I'm not going to do that thing because I'm like your shit's your own shit so I can say it but I, I just yeah but then the good thing is it's, it's pos- I, I love the fact that I'm like that I live with somebody that does this because they also understand it yes mm-hmm. so it's it's that kind of thing um, and actually after after i finish with you guys i'm away to do a self-tape so i'm doing an addition oh, really? in my house um, <laughs> 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 oh wow well, well, well hopefully that comes with something and we'll be watching you you know just on our youtube we'll be watching you in a live performance or watching you recording something yeah. so that'd be really really good um I, so there's hundreds of kind of um, programs and stuff like that on just now um, that are kind of trying to support the arts. And you had mentioned some like kind of live performances. Um, I had seen uh, there was some pantos as well during Christmas time that people yeah. were doing because um, that's like that's part 
a, like our family tradition. We always go to like the theatre and the panto because I always felt as if that was much more um, accessible, maybe yeah. arts um, as well. I mean, that's, think- that's one of the, the first experiences is that most people have in the theatres going to yes. the panto. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I definitely, from a very young age, and it's definitely more... I uh, exciting as well. There's maybe um there's more fun and comedy involved in it. Do you think that they'll end up making like pantos at different times of the year to kind of overcompensate? Do you think you'll be having a little oh cranky at summer fest? That sounds or... Absolutely hellish. <laughs> I've no idea. I mean, there is a lot of kind of like I mean, I know that on a more do like a summer panto and stuff, so there's a lot of kind of mm-hmm. alternative they try and do a kind of different sort of panel they sit to do a Christmas show all that. I, I suppose it's a possibility isn't it people mm-hmm. are just trying to find different ways keeping stuff fresh and I maybe aye. Just, just need to, I say what well, I hurry up and get a panel in but I don't want to hurry up and go to December again at the moment I love a summer thanks very much yes I definitely a summer definitely maybe maybe we'll just pitch a play in the park never mind tea in the aye. park a play in the park Definitely. We'll get we'll get lights and that, and we'll just put a backdrop up and get involved. Do that in space. a botanic botanic gardens? They do a what do you call it? They do Shakespeare in the park. Oh, aye. So they do, they used to do that. Mm-hmm. So it's like an outdoor theatre experience. Mm-hmm. So I, I think these things are everything's going to become more outdoor. Well, everything's already started to be a bit more outdoor, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Glasgow's a perfect place to have stuff outdoor as well, obviously, with the weather on that. It's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's like what we kind of see the future is. Um, but just going back to how it's affected us, how do we support the arts then? How, what do we do like from this stage onwards to make sure that... I mean, back to where they if are? it's something that you really care about, it's just about speaking up. Um, obviously, at the moment, everything's... Our, our world is really really online based it's really social media based um there's lots of campaigns online there's lots of stuff you can sign also just about supporting people's work as well and and following i mean there's a lot of people that are putting out their own content from home they're writing their own shit it's, it's so instant they just film stuff on their phone put it out there um so you know and if people have like you know if you've seen that like, you can buy them a coffee and stuff like that yeah uh-huh. kind of uh-huh. you know, it's like i mean i support i know it's just supporting individual people but it, it helps do you know what I mean it helps these are the people that are going to be writing the plays that you're going mm-hmm. to be going, going to see when yeah. you come out the other end of this you know yeah. um so it's just about watching stuff talking about it and 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 donating and whatever way you can mm-hmm. if you can Aye. Do you think lots of people that are involved in the arts are maybe going into other fields of work and maybe won't return to the arts? Do you think we've lost quite a lot of um, maybe our Scottish creative people? <laughs> I don't think so, because I think people in an industry are really, really resilient. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that we, we, we all do different jobs anyway, because we have yeah. to, because we don't act all the time. So in between times, mm-hmm. we are. Like I've got a pal that works doggy daycare, Mm-hmm. Um, people that work in um, care homes, um, mm-hmm. support workers, working in a bar, you know, when that was allowed, all this sort of yeah. stuff. So um, it's funny you're saying that actually, because my brother in law's just kind of went into uh, an actual proper job and he's an actor. So uh-huh. maybe, but I think, I don't think that's getting to do a lot down. I think that's just his personal thing. Funny um, how you say a proper job there. When I know. A proper job, Kira. <laughs> no, it is. It's <laughs> I know. No, it is. And that's people, people don't actually appreciate that it's a proper job. Aye. It's hard work and all that. But, um, but I, th- I suppose, like, it's, ju- it's, it's it's a funny thing you're saying that, actually, because sometimes in life, I do feel a wee bit like a bit of a dafty. Like, sometimes, <laughs> like, me and Davey are pure, like, I don't know, like, people have, like, their house and their kids and they and they have a car and they kind of love this like, sort of like yeah, we were yeah. and I'm like I, I just like wear dungarees and like, like fanny about and uh, I, I don't want to be another person like as my job you're, 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 you're preaching to the choir here you're preaching to the choir as you fuckers we are getting paid to go go-karting and like I don't know why I said I wear dungarees <laughs> <laughs> Well, you do. You do. <laughs> <I'm angry. laughs> just like, like, what I mean is, is like, I still feel like I am a bit of, I suppose everybody feels that way. I still feel like in a big way, but I just think that, like, I've never actually properly grown into myself. Mm-hmm. That's some advice for young people who want to get into that. We're dungarees. Like, <laughs> we're dungarees. <laughs> 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 
Duncan is like, she's just skyrocketing. Here, here, Kira, the Casey. Mate, stop making them grease, Kira. That's it. Don't, don't, don't. Get any advice if you go into that. Aye, fly on a pair of Dunkarees, mate. You'll sort of your foot right. <laughs> oh, that's mad. Anyway. <laughs> so, just um, any advice for a young person that's maybe doesn't have the. Um, like the maybe money behind them to join a theatre company um, or like maybe like a, a low cost way for a young person to get involved in acting in the arts or somebody that's maybe studying it at college um, and they want to pursue their career. What, is, what advice would you give them? What kind of things should they be doing? Right. Right, so that's a couple of questions anyway. So I, I think... If you're if you're going into an ind- industry, then you need to you need to be have quite a thick skin. Mm-hmm. Is that the expression? Aye. Aye. Um, I mean, and that doesn't mean don't be vulnerable, by the way, because like I'm I'm very much like pure heavy on top of my mental health these days. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um and I'm a very open person, so I don't understand people that suppress things and that. Right? I think it's a bit weird, but anyway, that's ninety percent of the population. <laughs> 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 I like to talk about stuff now. So I, I think that yeah, it's, it's important to be vulnerable, like as in like, you know, oh, I really wish I had that job and being sad about that and all that. But I think that you, you still need to be able to go like that, right, okay, that's done with push it to does it because rejection happens all the time. You're going mm-hmm. for hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Um so I think that goes without saying. I think that you just need to be game mm-hmm. and you need to have faith in yourself and uh, be bold. Be bold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 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 you know stick to I, I think that this is kind of I'm kind of contradicting myself a wee bit here I think that it's dead dead important to take advice from the right people by the way mm-hmm. um, and be game enough to know the people who don't know what they're talking about mm-hmm. um, but listen to people and know that you're not totally experienced so listen to folk take that advice on board but also to know who the hell you are mm-hmm. um, and have that integrity and um, just I believe in your thing. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like getting somewhere and kind of like you know and, and wanting to make a career out of this and all that it's just a, it's just about pushing man it's about chatting doors it's about pushing and it's about making your own work I think making your own work is a huge thing now mm-hmm. um, because I, I know like even you know in terms of like myself I'm, I'm obviously a working class actor um, and I think that you know sometimes it's quite tough um you know that we're not very represented mm-hmm. a lot of the time and I think there's a there's all clearly a lot of groups that are underrepresented um mm-hmm. but you know I think that a lot of the time my accent holds me back mm-hmm. and um I find that really difficult because, <laughs> because mm-hmm. instead anyway oh poor me uh I don't get jobs no no no, def- uh, no definitely that is because you, you know what it's like we are we are the people that will be watching programs about their acting and rubbish their acting rubbish and then we'll watch something they'll be like oh, they were just too Scottish so and it, it, it's it's just it's stupidity like we should just be proud that we've got um a lovely accent and being able to kind of put that into different um and I, outlets, really. and I think that you know the reason that we're so weird about that. I remember when River City first came on the telly, and everybody was pure slagging it and all that. And like, oh my god, need to talk like that. And I'm like, ah, well, actually, the day because that's what they talk like in real life. It's just that we're not used to hearing our own accent on telly, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and we give ourselves a hard time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that it, what I'm trying to say is, is I think that in this industry, you, ha- you need to make your own shit happen. You need to write mm-hmm. your own work. You need to create your own work. And that's and it's there's no point in sitting here moaning. Like, but I'm I'm part of a. Um, a female comedy group called What's Her Face, mm-hmm. um, which is brilliant. Um, and it's really encouraged me to write because I've always had the fear of kind of writing and stuff. And I've, I mm-hmm. find that far more exposing than actually acting. Um, but it's pure encouraged me to heavy write stuff and uh, stuff and all that. Um, and that's how you get shit. What's the point of sitting here going like that? Oh, I want to do that. Or I'm not getting that. Oh, for mm-hmm. me, I'm not getting a job. Just write the thing and do the thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, I make that's... make the opportunity, create the opportunity. Yeah. I oh, that's that. That's, that's, mate, let's let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take over the world. 
it's perfect yeah. timing as well because a lot of young people they have more time in their hands they're not in school and they're not in university or college you know so so go for it like pick up the pen start creating your own and hang out as well Lee so see like so I, I, um, my partner Dave he's got a, a programme called Shooters Films and I work with them a lot right and we work um work with professional actors as well but we have a programme where we go into the community so we work with young people we work in prisons um homeless shelters kind of places like that and we make we basically make films with um vulnerable groups of people Mm -hmm. and um it's amazing actually because the people that aren't actors are the ones that tend to be the most talented yes Mm -hmm. but anyway um but i think uh, but we also work in like um i hate calling it this the rcs royal conservatoire Mm -hmm. uh um, with students in there as well and what we're constantly saying to people is is that if they do take an interest and in want to do this for a living or whatever and they want to get better at it and all that it's like you get that do you know what I mean that's yeah. everything yeah. there was a there was a Bentley advert shot entirely on it I think it was neat it was like an iPhone 5 or something like that it was shot on wow um so it's like we've got so much access to stuff now mm-hmm. you can do stuff like like that like mm-hmm. and look like even just what you guys are doing just now do you know what i mean it's so instant mm-hmm. and you can make stuff look really good as well so it's like you can easily make a short film on an iphone mm-hmm. you know what i mean and put Definitely. it out there because mm-hmm. and, and people see it that's the thing it's yes, like I know, having, that, having a big platform so many young people have got so many followers and they're like like actually putting it out there and think about how many views you'll get and like I, how much, and feedback as well definitely like you'll get some constructive criticism you'll get some nasty criticism but you also get some praise Aye. as well so you need to take the, the good and way back the, the thing about it is right is look, look at all these um, people online I'm choosing my words here but there's loads of people online that are putting content out that's like getting hundreds and hundreds of hits and likes and all that sort of stuff and mm-hmm. it's not you know what I mean no, and it's, uh, it's so no... so use so use that to your advantage. Like you can actually put some really really good shit out there. That's mm-hmm. like like we shot a film um, during lockdown because we were staying with my pal um, for like the kind of first lockdown. Um, it was all a bit mad. We moved out of flat, and the day we moved to move in with him for a bit before we could find a new flat, and then the day mm-hmm. we moved in with him, lockdown got announced, and we're like, okay, then we'll be staying here for <laughs> the foreseeable. Uh, but he's a he's a camera operator, so. Mm-hmm. It, but but we shot this on our phone. We obviously granted there's three experienced people in that house, right? Me, I'm an actor, Davies a director for as a camera operator. But we shot I shot we just got a pal, she was a spoken word artist, she wrote a kind of poem and then we just shot some stuff to go with the poem and it was just all about kind of lockdown and mm-hmm. it was all just shot, wasn't it using kit? We didn't have the kit in the house, we just used an mm-hmm. iPhone and then you can get editing software, like you can edit the software yeah. on your phone and mm-hmm. then it's uh-huh. you know I mean? and it was done. Amazing, amazing, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your advice to our young people. We have got a lot of young people who are interested in that field of work and, and gone into it. So thank you. Hopefully they're, they're watching as well right now. We will share right. this on social media, isn't it? But really appreciate you coming on, gaining your time as well, Kira. It's been brilliant. And um, just oh, thanks it, so much. be bold and buy dungarees. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> and Kira signed up to come and get involved in it. You feel a wee bit better as well. Oh, so. Listen, definitely, <laughs> man. Um, and actually, I feel bad because I think I've actually said to Kelly a long time ago that I would I would come in and um, bring some of my pals and all that as well. But no, I would love to come in and see what you are doing and Aye, get involved. Amazing. So to hold me to that, the thing is, is that I've got a mind like a sieve. Like, I'm pure. Aye, that's all right. It's because I never used to. I used to be pure heavy on it, but I've, uh, I have a child. <laughs> so... Yeah. Aye, that's that's taking up your time. Aye. No, thanks so much, Jenny. You've been brilliant. Um, but I'll not finish the other questions, Kira. Sorry. Um, every time a guest comes on, oh, they have to go off. up against Kirsty, the co-host here. Um, and I quit. I feel nervous. <laughs> I don't want to get arse Since you're on the telly, Nat, Kira, what's on the telly? You're on the telly. Uh, we're going to do a telly quiz. Um, uh. So the challenger, the the guest, always gets to choose if they want to go first or second. So would you like to go first or second? First. First, right, yeah. right, yeah. Okay, you ready? Yes. Custy's not been great this season, but... <laughs> <laughs> right, question one. Which period drama became Netflix's biggest ever show in January 2021? Game of Thrones? No, it's not Game of Thrones. I'll have to pass it over to Kirsty. Bridgerton? It is Bridgerton, aye. Yeah! Sake, Game of Thrones isn't even a period drama, it's freaking um fiction. <laughs> so anyway. All right, okay. So next question goes to you, Kirsty, to go turn it up. Who won the first series of RuPaul's Drag Race UK? 
who won the first. Uh, I know who my favourite was. <laughs> Much better. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, who won it? Uh, was it the Vivian? No. It was the Vivian, I. It was yours! Do an ill, Kira. We're doing it. Got to get this back. How would I go that? <laughs> <laughs> so, your next question is US sitcom Frasier is a spin off series from which popular comedy? Oh, I've done a theme tune. Oh my God. I can't let it go in this long because I said people were sitting in silence watching me. <laughs> I think we're frozen. Cheers. Well done, it is. Cheers. Oh. Who won? You're bringing it back. Okay, so next question is to you, Kirsty. How many hosts of the Great British Bake Off have there been? Oh. Six. It's no six, so we pass it over to Kira to equalise here. Right, so, right, I'm just going to have a thought of so, right, so it was Mel and Sue, and then it was... That Ma- guy Mary with Berry the hair. And Paul Hollywood. Yes, oh, Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood. <laughs> and then Mary Berry went away. Right, right, wait, no, oh, no, hosts, right. hold on, no, they're judges. Right, Shit, right, so, judges. right, hold on. Right, so it was Mel and Sue, and then it was Noel and Sandy, and now, uh, right, it's at five... Five's correct. I've brought it back. To oh! Two each. And the next question is yours as well. So, what is the name? Right, I'm sorry about this question. I just got it after the internet. I don't even know what it is. But you might have seen it. What is the name of Zendaya's character in HBO drama Euphoria? <gasps> I've only watched two episodes of this. Uh, Ray? Oh, it's no Ray. I've got to pass it over to Kirsty. <sighs> I, I don't even... What? <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Uh, uh, Zendaya's character's name? Mm-hmm. Is it Sebastian? It's not Sebastian, no. Is you know, you were so close, it was Rue. Oh, past that. Rue Bennett. Oh, that was close. So it's still to each, and the next question is mm-hmm. Dusty's, and it is which girl group performed during the opening minutes of Channel 5's launch? In 1997 in the UK. Space Girls? It is the Space Girls, I think. Yes! Yeah, I guess that, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty easy. Like, what girl grip was it in the 90s? At that uh, 97. Wait, wait, stop, stop, take that away. To me, I'm never this good. Three, two. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you five years either side, right? So, you've got a area 10 years, whatever you call that. Um, so, in what year did Coronation Street first air on ITV? Are you asking me this? Aye, this is your question. Oh, he's cut, cut it. Cut it. Right, so they just think it's fifth, fifth. Aye, fine enough. Right, so they just think it's like 50 years there. So, they don't need to count. So, it's a difficult one, Lee. It is. And then. So, two, four, one, two, three. Because I can't count, right? So. <laughs> You've got five years either side, I think that's quite decent. 69? It's no 69, that's got to pass it to Kirsty, but Kirsty, you don't get the five years either side because that's not fair. Oh. You have to get it bang on now. I think that was just favouritism. Sick. Um... Sixty. That's correct. Hi. <gasps> Shut up. Hi. No way. It's four <gasps> two. It's four two. So it's never happened. We Wait, is that the future just going to pop out here? Like, How many questions is there? Uh, there's five questions each. So if she gets this next one, she's one. <gasps> so you get five. <laughs> you this as well, Kirsty, right? So there's okay. five. If you get five more or five less, right? right? How many episodes of Game of Thrones are there? Oh, I don't watch that rubbish. No, me neither. Like 40 million? <laughs> that your answer. Um, how many episodes did you say? Yeah. Mm. 39. It's no, it's no in the five either, so I've got to pass it to Kira. 
It's you sanity day calculations, right? I'm you've not got to get it bang on, but Kira. I'm not, I know, right, but I'm not cheating. I hope you're not so cheating. You know, no, I'm not. I'm just putting my calculator up because I can't count, right? So I'm thinking it's probably been that amount of series with that amount of episodes, right? 60. 60 is not correct. No, it's 73 episodes, yeah. Oh, she was closest though. That was that was oh, fairly interesting. So you need to get these next two to draw, Kira. Right, next sound. Two. I just want to know if I know the answers. I'm not going to win. So right. What is the highest rated TV series on the IMDb Top 250 TV series list? The highest rated TV series? Wow. Friends? It's not Friends, no. I've got to pass it to Kirsty. The highest rated TV series? Mm-hmm. Like, in America? Or, like, the world? In the world. The world? Highest... The Office? It's not The Office, no. It's uh, Breaking Bad. So there you go, Kirsty, you finally won a quiz. Shut up, I just won! Aye, aye. Oh my god! <laughs> one question left. Well done. Well done, Kirsty. <laughs> so, that doesn't normally happen. No, uh, it doesn't never happen, Kira, so thanks. <laughs> I know you let her win. You're just going to transfer. Uh, what was the last question? Uh, the last question is, if he's won it, it is... Which British TV show recorded the largest audience for a single episode with over 30 million viewers? Again. Which British TV show recorded the largest audience for a single episode with over 30 million viewers? A British TV show? It's Christmas Day 1986. I don't know. I really wish I knew these things. 86? Right. Uh, oh, that one with the, the guy and he's on the couch. The um, family. The Royal Family? No Royal Family, no. That was 90s, was it? No, no. Don't know. I don't know. What, don't know. What was that? The EastEnders. Oh, I forgot about them. <laughs> <laughs> I got the biggest stuff in them. <laughs> Prefer <laughs> River City. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, here are the cases beat on a TV quiz. <laughs> uh, we're going to blame it on lockdown. That's what oh, 100%. She She's too busy to be in Aye. She's too busy cooking, aye, and being creative. <laughs> cooking lentils and wearing about grease. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks very much again, Kira, for coming on. Really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thanks for having me, man. That was a no, good thank laugh. you, Kira. You know, I really appreciate to, it. Look forward to seeing you in the complex as well, and I'm sure a lot of young people will be really interested in coming along to a wee session or something. Whatever you, you Definitely, have man. Let's do it. Thank you. Cheers. Cool. Um, so that is our episode for the week. If you want to get us on social media, you can check us out on Facebook. You can add us at Kelly Youth Complex staff. Our Twitter is Youth Complex CYC. Our Instagram and TikTok are both youth underscore complex. And if you want to email us, you can email us at cycyouthteam at gmail.com. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, and share the videos far and wide on your social medias as well. That would help us out a lot. So we'll try to get as much views as possible, try to get this podcast out to as many young people and families and in the community as possible as well, and keep you updated on all things milk round so thanks again for watching and thanks for coming on Kira. cheers see you next week bye bye